I'm Lee Buckner, your economics instructor. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about aggregate markets and recessionary gaps. First, let's talk about how we label our axes on our aggregate market graphs. On our y-axis, we're measuring price level. We're not measuring price of one item anymore, but rather the price levels for all items that we might purchase as a country. Our x-axis is no longer measuring quantity or number of units for just one particular type of product, but some measurement of all of the products we produce as a country. Typically what we're looking at here is real GDP. Now, when it comes to actually putting uh, some data on this chart, first thing we want to look at is our potential to produce products in this country. Uh, what in your graph is going to be called a long-run aggregate supply. That's going to be a vertical line. LRAS. And again, what that number tells us is our potential for production. Next thing we're going to look at is aggregate demand. That is a downward slope line, just like all of our other demand graphs. But what aggregate demand tells us is how much consumption products we want as a country, how much investment products we want as a country, how much government products, and also our net exports all combined into one large measurement. Last thing we're going to put is short run aggregate supply. Now what this number represents is how much stuff we would produce as a nation from all of our producers, not just how much we would produce of one particular type of product, but how much of all the products we produce as a nation we'd be willing to make and sell at different price levels. When you look at the interaction of aggregate demand and short-run aggregate supply, you get two numbers. First thing you get is our actual price level as a country. This is often measured as our CPI, our Consumer Price Index. The other thing we get, what we see on our x-axis here, is going to be real GDP, where these two lines intersect, short-run aggregate supply and aggregate demand, they tell us how much products we actually produce as a nation. What I label here actual GDP or actual gross domestic product. As you can see on this graph, I have our actual production falling short of our long run aggregate supply. Our long run aggregate supply represents how much we could produce. In this graph, we're showing a country that has a recessionary gap. That is to say, our actual production is less than our potential. For this chart, that recessionary gap is this distance right here. If the country were to close that recessionary gap, one of two things would have to happen. Either short-run aggregate supply would shift to the right, or aggregate demand would shift to the right. If you're going to shift aggregate demand to the right, which I'll do here, there are a couple main things that can cause this. Uh, first is an increase in consumers' desire to, pur to purchase goods. This can happen for a lot of reasons. One of the major things would be an increase in wealth. You could also see this kind of shift happen if you have an increase in government purchases or an increase in the amount of investment um, that businesses make to expand their production capabilities. Alternatively, short-run aggregate supply could also increase to close this gap. Um, if you were to see that kind of change, that's typically brought about by a lowering of the cost of production. Either way, if a country has a recessionary gap, either aggregate demand or short and aggregate supply is going to have to increase if you want that gap to close and for a country's actual production to equal its potential, which is represented as long-run aggregate supply. 